Hello, in this video, I will discuss the implementation of local variables in assembly. Before we get into the details, let's ask ourselves why we even use local variables. Why use locals? Uh, for starters, local variables um, allow us to um, release, uh, reuse memory. So uh, because we use, as we will see in just a second, we will use stack to allocate local variables. Um, this becomes a area of memory that we can put our local variables on and and once we use them we release them so we free the memory so it's allocated and deallocated as and when we use them so it allows for the reuse of memory uh, limited scope provides data protection so one of the things we know about local variables is if i have a function and i declare a variable inside the function if i declare a local variable inside here uh, let's say uint 8 underscore t when i declare it we know that this has a scope which li limits itself to this which means it cannot be accessed anywhere outside so this provides a lock tight way of 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 protecting this data from being accessed anywhere else the third good reason for using local variables is um, only the program that created can access it or more specifically uh, only the function that created it can access it uh, this is alludes again to the uh, to the um, protection part code is re-entrant um, one of the things that we will need uh, when we write uh, functions which are interrupt service routines and also when we look into recursion which is a topic i will discuss later in this series of lectures um, it's important that routines be re-entrant which means that if, it, if a routine is executed and while the routine is executed if it's interrupted and the same routine is called again there shouldn't be any unexpected behavior it should work perfectly and the same is true about recursion recursion is uh, involves a function calling itself so every 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 invocation of the kind of function should act uh, act correctly and not have anything from a previous invocation carry be carried over that's what re-entrant is um, the other thing that is good about uh, local variables is code is relocatable and this comes from the fact that um, all access we access local variables we uh, look access of local variables is going to be done uh, as we will see in just a second by using a uh, uh, indexed addressing mode index addressing mode uh, using stack as the stack pointer as the base and an offset as we will see in just a second um, as the base and the offset will be a local variable binding what that means is uh, in terms of relocatability it means that we won't access any variable with relative to a pc or relative to anything uh, that that would cause our code to not function if we were to move it to another place so these are good reasons for using local variables so now let's get into why how we implement local variables the implementation um, will follow four main steps and um, these are not these are, these are not steps that we um, we follow one after the other but they're four elements if you will the four elements of implementing local variables in assembly <clears throat> in assembly are first one is called binding the second is allocation the third is access and the fourth is deallocation 
and this will become clear in just a second uh, as we as we discuss these um, the in a nutshell binding is uh, is the act of assigning an offset assigning offsets to local variables so for us local variables are simply going to be offsets and we'll see that in just a second allocation is um, allocating space on the stack for our local variables. Axis is, as I said, using the indexed addressing mode and typically we'll do something like this. We'll do an LDR um, LDR into some register, let's say R4, we'll do the stack pointer and uh, and the binding associated with a local variable and the offset. The last thing, anything that has been allocated has to be deallocated, so we free up space that has been allocated. So let's take a simple example to work our way uh, through these concepts these elements. So I'm going to take an, a simple example uh, of uh, computing the sum. Uh, computing the sum of, um, of uh, numbers. And the way we'll do it is we'll do, for example, if I give you a number called num, then I want you to, to find out what is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to num. So a simple example would be if I give you a num value of let's say 5, then you would do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and return that value. Um, which in this case is going to be, uh, that's, that's uh, 710, that's 15. And we know how to do this. Um, there are different ways of doing it. It's five times six divided by two, but it doesn't really matter. Um, but let's, let's see if we can write some code for doing it. So the code in C, uh, I'm gonna write the code in C first so that you can you can see how the C code uh, corresponds to the assembly code. If I were writing this code in C, and I'm going to keep things simple for now, I'm going to assume that um, the sum routine takes a single input uh, called, uh, which is a uint32 underscore t called num, and it returns a uint32 integer. So um, Here's my, here are my two local variables. I'm going to define a local variable called i and a, another local variable called result, which I'm going to initialize to zero to start with. And uh, it's very simple. The code itself is pretty straightforward. I go for i equals zero to i less than num, less than or equal to num. Uh, I Actually, let's because we don't need the zero, we're gonna go i, i plus plus, and then we simply do result plus equals i, and when we are done, we're gonna return the result. So this is our our C code. Let's see how this first. Uh, how this translates to assembly. First, we are going to identify the fact that there are two local variables here. These two are local variables. There's one and two local variables. Okay. So now let's take a look at how this code would look like in assembly. So our function is called sum. Uh, we're going to first define what are our bindings. So we have two local variables, i and result and we're gonna give them what we call as bindings because local variables are really bindings and so uh, we'll use the equ op uh, 
pseudoop and we'll assign them bindings. The idea of bindings is when, when the variables are allocated, wherever the stack pointer is prior to the allocation, and once the allocation is done, so this is where the two variables are gonna be allocated, the stack pointer is gonna point up here after they're allocated. So assuming we allocated them such that I have my first variable i here, and my second variable result so there's my i here and the second variable let's say uh, let's use another result which is here and each of those because they were 32 bits each of those is 32 bits so they're going to be sitting here so the question is where is i relative to the stack pointer once the allocation is done and that's what its binding is. So i is going to be allocated at an offset, i is gonna be at an offset of zero. Whereas result is gonna be at an offset of four because that's really where relative to the stack pointer, result is at four and i is at zero. So i is at zero and result is at four. So that's their binding. So, uh, now we're ready to write our code. So the first step that we have to do is to, we have to allocate memory for it, for these two. Because when this subroutine was entered, the prop stack pointer was pointing somewhere here. This is the initial value of the stack point. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, decrement the stack pointer. So I'll do a sub stack pointer. Let me give myself a little space, sub stack pointer pound eight because there's eight bytes it has we need to allocate here eight bytes so we allocate that now we're going to initialize our variables we'll do a move r4 pound zero so we can initialize our result our result was initially a value of zero so we'll store the value of r4 to the stack pointer at an offset which is the binding that for result so uh, let's make a quick note here. This is our allocation step. And right now, this is our first access. There'll be many accesses, but that's how we access a variable. We use the, we use the base, which is the, and the offset, which is in our case, the binding. So we, we initialized our first variable, We'll initialize our second variable. So we'll move r4 pound one because i is initialized to one. We'll store r4 to the stack where the variable i is. So both these are accesses. Now we're gonna uh, compare. We're gonna um, start our start our code by first loading r4 into sorry i into uh, register uh, r4 you'll see why i'm doing this back to back in just a second uh, we'll compare i against against uh, r naught and you may recall that because we are following AAPCS, AAPCS tells us that the single input that our sum function is going to get will be in register R0. That's where our num is. And the single output should also be in R0. So, so that's why our this particular case, this is where our num is. This is the comparison. So once we compare them, uh, if it is high, then I'm done. So I'm gonna go to some label called done S. Uh, if it is not done, then I'm going to increment results. So let's load R5 with uh, stack pointer pound result. And uh, let's add R5, R4. Let's store it back. So that'll be R5 stack pointer with a pound result. 
So these three steps basically are going to do result plus equals i. This here is my i equals 1. Uh, this here is my uh, i result equals 0. This is from your C code. And this is the comparison of uh, i against i is um, if i is less than or equal to num. All right, so uh, we're almost done. So we'll store the result. We'll increment r4 by 1 and store it back. And we'll go to, we'll branch branch back to our loop s, which is going to be this point right here. So we keep looping and when we come out of this loop, which is done s, we will simply load the result into r0. So stack pointer pound result. And we do that and uh, our code now will say that I have, uh, uh, I simply have to do my <clears throat> deallocation at this point. So I do an add stack pointer pound eight which is my D allocation. Um, and uh, by the way, there are many axis statements, axis here, axis here. So this is my binding allocation. All these are axis steps where I use the, uh, use the base plus offset to access it. And once I'm done, I am going to do a BXLR. And because we are being AAPCS compliant, we're gonna make sure that we, we clean up our mess. So we'll push R4 and R5 to start with, and we will pop R4 and R5 when we are done. So you may recall that this all this started with our two local variables, which are uh, uint 32 underscore t i and result. Both of them were and result. Both of them were 32 bits, right? So what if, just speculatively speaking, what if we had uh, done something differently? What if our you your your i was really an 8 bit number and our result was 32. How would this code change? Well, you will notice that if that were the case, then I will not need eight bytes of storage on the stack. I will only need five bytes of storage. I need four bytes for result and one byte for this. This will only be one byte now, so that's eight bits. So which means that the stack pointer, when I decrement it, I won't be decrementing it by eight, I'll be decrementing it by five. The second thing we'll notice is the offsets are no longer, uh, result offset is no longer at four. This is only gonna be at an offset of one because this is only taking one byte. So that's gonna become a one. Now, all of accesses to our variable i will have to be byte accesses. So that will be a store byte. This will be a load byte. This will also be a store byte because we modified the i there. The result on the other hand doesn't change. So we want to make sure that when we restore, we're going to restore it back by deallocating five bytes on the stack. Um, I, I hope this makes sense. Uh, uh, there'll be other scenarios where our variables might be a mix of 32 bits, 8 bits and 16 bits. It doesn't really matter as long as you uh, you access them, um, you allocate the proper amount of space and access them uh, in keeping with their size. Uh, I hope this makes sense. In the next video, I will uh, run this code in uh, Kyle and show you how to visualize the stack.